welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 232nd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. And today we are going to have a French-inspired episode based on a book that came out last month and is full of inspiration on embodying your inner Parisian woman or man that you are or bringing it into your everyday life no matter where you call home. And uh, we're also going to talk about a petit plaisir that I have been enjoying. Um, Let's see, one, two... I think I've enjoyed it three, maybe four times in the last three weeks. It's a recipe for the everyday meal that doesn't take that much time when you're exhausted, looking for comfort food, but also want those vegetables. And it also works great for a dinner party with friends that's casual, fun, and will absolutely please your guests. So be sure to stay tuned. And at the end of today's episode, I'll share that recipe with you. Okay, let's get into today's topic. So I'm going to share with you today 28 life and style tips from a Parisian woman. Now, you can incorporate these tips into your life wherever you call home. Maybe you've never visited Paris. Maybe you have visited Paris, but do not call it home. These are ways to live in the present. These are ways to elevate the everyday, which is something that I'm regularly trying to do, and just thoughtful ways to go about your day. So let's get into this. I want to begin with a very simple quote from the book that's titled Sophie the Parisian Style Tips from a True Parisian Woman by Natalie Pegney. Becoming Parisian is possible, but remaining Parisian is an art. Now, with that said, to spend time in Paris is to spend time in a city with a feminine energy. Simply the proper article spoken when saying the city of Paris is La Ville de Paris which is feminine. Now, this is not to say that there's not all sorts of different energies there, but when people speak or write about it in a formal way, they often talk about it as a woman, she. And the question that always bounces around in one's mind, and definitely mine, is, okay, what exactly exactly does that mean? And we should ask, does it mean anything at all? Perhaps it simply gives us permission to embrace and explore our emotions, whatever they may be, to consciously take pleasure in the beauty that surrounds us, either nat- naturally or architecturally. But regardless of this masculinity or femininity, femininity, Paris is a city to embrace, but at the same time encourages us to let go of the must-dos and the have-tos and and instead enjoy what surrounds us from the energy of the people, the energy of the history that engulfs us every, every, with every moment because it's, it's consistently ubiquitous wherever we look. And to savor as well the, the baguette we pick up in the morning by tearing off the end and enjoying it on the way back to our apartment, lingering for a long lunch and dawdling along the cobbled streets as we explore a new to us arrondissement. Now, in today's episode, as I mentioned at the top of of our our, our topic today, it is a new book that was released just this last month, um, Sophie the Parisian, Style Tips from a True Parisian Woman, that offers detailed insight into ways to infuse your life, no matter where you may live, with these everyday concepts, focusing on beauty, focusing on on things that bring us pleasure and also bring us joy, because those two things are different. Now, if you've ever desired to visit Paris or if you have visited Paris or if you are moving to Paris or live in Paris, these are daily habits and rituals that will enliven the everyday moments and bring a little Parisian charm to your way of living. Let's get started. Number one, invest in your personality, knowledge, and understanding of the world. True fulfillment does not reside with paying attention to and perfecting one's appearance. Rather, investing in developing our inner beauty is key. In any stage of life, knowledge of the world and oneself cultivates charm, intrigue, and true beauty. The exterior, what's outside of us, our clothing, our makeup, our hair, that can come at any time. 
But when we cultivate what's inside of us, we, we strengthen our mind, we engage our mind, we grow in those ways, we can have that with us forever. And that is something to always keep in mind. So that's number one. Number two is to enjoy a paro time or an aperitif. This is an opportunity at the end of the day before dinner to gather with friends, to gather with one person, to go simply to your favorite cafe or restaurant and sip and perhaps nibble, but just to relax. And this was actually a petit plaisir on an episode this summer when I was uh, spending some time in France because there were so many evenings I enjoyed a pair of time. And obviously in the summer we're, we're drinking more rosé. And so of course the rosé came out, some fougas came out in Provence. Um, and it was just truly delightful. Now we may, some of us may equate it to happy hour here in the States. And while I I do see some similarities between the two, as far as the time of day and whatnot, I think they're a little bit different. Um, It's not about cheaper drinks necessarily. It's about enjoying good food, but also slowing down and relaxing and just unwinding. And so, yes, there are similarities, but I just think there's a slight difference in the approach and the expectation as well. So that's number two. Number three is have a love affair with a quality handbag. Be practical with your selection, but do not be afraid to invest because this is something you can have with you for many, many years if it's well made. Don't have to buy anything necessarily that uh, has a logo that people are going to, to recognize. This is for you, but quality that's going to work with the clothing you wear and the life you lead. That's number three. Number four, plain and simple, wear a leather ballet flat. This is an easy go-to for work, for play, for weekend, for work week. And it looks feminine and dressed up, but it can also be dressed down as well. Just make sure it is made well so it lasts a long time um, and it fits your foot. Number five is choose quality essential items for your wardrobe. This is not going to be a new idea to to listeners of this podcast or readers of the blog because this is something we talk about and, and how we address our clothing all the time. This idea of having few but purchasing investment items that will last. Investing does not mean you have to pay full price. Set sales alerts or go through the online shops that you frequently shop and and find those items that you love, but don't want to pay full price. And maybe come sale time, they'll still be available and you'll be able to pay a, a fraction of the price and you know, you will love it. Visit consignment, visit secondhand shops that sell quality, well-made items from trenches to ballet flats, to blazers, cashmere sweaters, and a classic Mernier striped shirt. These are items to have in what we call the capsule wardrobe. So that's number five. Choose quality essentials for your wardrobe. Number six is hop on a bike. Whether you're wearing a dress or jeans, whatever it is you're wearing, get a different vantage point of the city or the town you live in. If you have some free time, explore this way. You can see more than walking. And it's also a wonderful way to get outside. So that's number six. Number seven, choose black. It goes with everything. True, true, and true. And you can wear it year round for the most part, depending on how you wear it in the summer. On that same point, then choose navy. That's number eight. Yves Saint Laurent combine these two in outfits, navy and black, and it's a lovely combination. Whether you want to do that or not is completely up to you, but navy is a classic dependable neutral that isn't black and it's something that is more available or or, or welcomed in the summer months so feel free to explore navy if you haven't lately (laughs) number nine find a cafe and frequent it regularly for an escape from the day and to watch the world pass by Um, back during August, during the Simply Luxurious Life's French week, I had on this podcast, you may remember Sonia Choquette, and she has been living in Paris since 2015. And one of the things that she spoke about in her book, and we, we briefly talked about it in, in our conversation, but it took her some time. But when she finally found cafes in her neighborhoods or her arrondissements that she was living in, because she's lived in a couple, couple of them, it was a place to call home. 
in many ways. And she got to know the waiters and she engaged with the waiters, sometimes playfully and sometimes they had, they bantered to say the, <laughs> to say the least, but she became someone they knew. And she also felt truly comfortable going there at the end of her days, in the middle of her days, just to be a part of the space during her week, her life. And it was something that I think we could all learn from to step out of our home, which is our sanctuary, and frequent those places we love, engage with the locals, engage with those people that are our neighbors, um, and just enjoy. So that's number nine. Number 10 is to remember to end your meals with cheese. Ta-da! This is a great way to shift when we eat cheese, number one, but also to eat some more cheese and to eat good cheese. Um, enjoy the cheese course after the main meal, the main entree, before you have your dessert. You may not even have dessert. And if you want to, pair it with a simple green salad tossed with homemade vinaigrette. Have one portion of cheese, not that big, but something that really tantalizes your taste buds slows you down. And yes, it will clean your palate as well. So that's number 10. Number 11, only artisanal made croissants, s'il vous plaît. In other words, find that bakery that you love and enjoy their croissants. They usually obviously make them in the morning. So make a weekly routine of perhaps going to that bakery and enjoying that croissant or bringing it home. I have always been on the hunt for good croissants. And recently, you may remember on my Instagram, I'll provide a picture of it on the show notes. I had a a wonderful bakery that made croissants and they still do. But then this other bakery decided to make croissants and opened up their business. And they were open on the weekends and a little bit more crispy a little bit more size proportionate as far as a little smaller and oh my gosh, so soft and lovely and buttery in the middle. So anyway, I am always on the hunt for great croissants and your company will appreciate it too. That comes to town, whether they have their own croissants where they live or not. If you know, if you have go-to croissants, that is a simple way to elevate the everyday or to elevate that weekend every single week. So that's number 11. Number 12 is to adhere to good health practices Eat well, mainly colorful food, abstain from processed foods like white flour and sugar, and exercise regularly. Simple, but it works. Number 13, dress with simple sophistication. I couldn't believe when I saw this phrase in the book because it fits this podcast perfectly, the simple sophisticate, simple sophistication with regards to dress. But there is something to be said for choosing clothing that isn't the star of the show you are, but it still is clothing that is beautiful, that makes you shine. And it's not trendy. It's your style once you've honed it. And it's quality items, not that many. You can mix and match them and you feel good in them. So figuring out your signature style, I'll provide a link on the show notes to a post um, that I've done on trying to find your signature style and how to go about doing that. I also detail this in an entire chapter in my new book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, where we talk about effortless style and how to really find it, cultivate it, and continue to grow into your signature style as we go through our lives. So if you're interested, be sure to check out that one chapter in my new book, which comes out in November 13th, so just over a week away. Number 14 is don't follow trends. Cultivate your own style. So 13 and 14 really go together in that regard. This is about you. This is about figuring out what works for you, what speaks to you, what makes you feel good. It, this does take time, but it's also something that should maybe take some pressure off your shoulders. You don't have to fit in with the latest trends. You don't have to wear a certain shirt or certain shoes. You simply have to wear what you feel good in that makes you feel your best. And again, that's something that we're going to talk about on the show notes with the links. And and I also talk about it in my new book. Now I'm going to take a quick break and introduce you to the sponsor of today's episode. For years, the co-founders of Holly and Tanager searched for the perfect backpack tote to carry their items in an organized manner. And now they have one. It's called the Professional. It's a backpack tote that will live up to the needs of the -the on-the-go, in-the-know, jet-setting, trend-setting, all-around extraordinary woman. This Professional backpack tote 
effortlessly converts from a backpack to a tote and then even to a cross body bag. Now, this is a backpack that is designed to take you from here to everywhere with luxurious style and effortless preparation with a well-organized interior and a suitcase handle sleeve. You can include, as far as the size of it, so many different things. How about a 17-inch laptop, an iPad Pro, your notebooks, your snacks? You can even put your tennis shoes that fit in the bottom compartment and... Hey, what about a water bottle or maybe a wine bottle? Your gym clothing and your yoga mat can go through the bottom compartment as well. In addition to the professional backpack tote, Holly and Tanager offers other extraordinary everyday handbags you don't see every day. Now, as a listener of the Simple Sophisticate, you're going to receive 15% off your first order. Visit Holly and Tanager dot com slash simple and use the promo code simple at checkout. That's Holly, H-O-L-L-Y, A-N-D, Tanager, T-A-N-A-G-E-R dot com slash simple. To get that 15% off, don't forget to use the promo code simple at checkout. Now, as we move through the rest of the list today, this is a list where For me, what I love about these kind of books, and there are so many more ideas than what I'm sharing with you today. This is just a sampling, and these are the ones that spoke to me. Now, I could have gone on for more than 28, but there are so many more with very specific um, recommendations on where to go, where to, what to visit, what shops to shop at, what restaurants to visit, what hotels to stay in. So it's a bit of a guidebook as well to Paris um, if you're interested in picking it up. But let's get back to our list. Number 15 is to thoughtfully select flowers that you love for your home. Now, in Paris, evidently, this book taught me something, white flowers have been shared by florists in Paris to be the top color choice. And if you think about it, white is a wonderful, simple touch that goes with any aesthetic in your home. And it brightens it up. So it might be something to try in all sorts of different varietals. White. Number 16 is use fewer yet better and seasonal ingredients to enable the ingredients that you are cooking with to sing. This is something we talked about in all of the episodes of my recent vodcast, The Simply Luxurious Kitchen. We talked about elevating the everyday with seasonal fare and how to do that because it really doesn't have to be complicated in the kitchen. It's just knowing what is in its best season or it's at its peak flavor and simply knowing how to elevate that flavor. So that's number 16. 17 is skillfully blend classic and contemporary interior design. Now at the beginning of October, I spotlighted um, Inez de la Fersange's new book, Maison. And it, it, it incorporates so many different homes in Paris that embody this exact concept of of a marrying classic and contemporary interior design. The key is to really just infuse a bit of yourself into the furniture and decor choices and to remember that you don't have to be stuck in one particular time period. So that's number 17. 18, I like this one. Speak your mind. Have an opinion. The part about having an opinion is that it's how we communicate it, but it's also that we have one, that we have more than just a presence. We have thoughts. We have ideas about what's going on. We know what's going on in the world and we want to engage with others about certain things or knowing which topics we want to engage in. So we pick our, our pick our topics, but to not shy away from having an opinion, not everyone has to like our opinion, but if it comes with sound reasoning, then we should definitely have one. All right. That's number 18, 19, Buy beautiful lace lingerie for you, as well as classic lingerie. And that's the key, is to shop for for our undergarments for ourselves. And and we do need to have those classic lingerie items. We need to have those for shaping and and for um, different wardrobe items that we wear. But we also need to have beautiful, well-made lingerie that can remind us of our sexuality, But more importantly, the sensuality of it, how it feels to wear it. Um, And that's something that's our secret. And if we'd like to share it, that's up to us. But it really is more about us. And I think that's that's something to always remember. In fact, a few years ago, I did an episode on curating a lingerie capsule wardrobe. And I'll provide a link to that on today's show notes. Number 20 is to wear simple makeup. So definitely wear some makeup. But... Use makeup that enhances your natural beauty. 
And that's something that may take time, but also is something that is to just remind ourselves how beautiful we are naturally um, and to embrace that uh, and then bring it, um, bring it forth. Number 21 is to wear high quality marinier tops from, for example, Petit Bateau, St. James or Lux Amour. And I've provided links to all three of those French clothing companies that offer the classic blue or navy and white stripe. But they also have it available in many other colors as well. Sweaters, not just t-shirts, but sweaters, long sleeve, short sleeve, boat neck, crew neck. They have them all. Number 22 is to visit the farmer's market on the weekend or during the week when the schedule allows or when your market is open. Why? To eat well, to if you need to, if it's been a hectic week and you've been eating out a lot and haven't been eating as well as you want, to remind yourself to get back to the foundation, get back to the roots, and really just rejuvenate your diet, but also to be reminded of what's in season and enjoy slowing down and exploring the food. I love going to markets um, as I share many photos of my journeys on Instagram. <laughs> That's number 22. Number 23 is visit the great exhibits of the moment. Now, this depends on where you live or where you are close to, um, but but become a connoisseur of your city's history, the arts, and any of the talents that come through town or are in town, and just celebrate those. I think those of us that are fortunate to have a very strong cultural and artistic community, um, it, it it is a treat, and I do feel spoiled at times being in Bend for a small town as as small of a town as we are. But even if you don't live in a town that has it, maybe you live nearby one. I remember when I was in Pendleton, we had, um, I had to drive three hours to Portland to see this one particular exhibit. And it was, it was the items from the Tuileries in Paris. And I was, I told my mom, I was like, if you'd like to come with me, I'd love for you to go. And she came and we had a wonderful time at this exhibit and really just felt like we were stepping into Paris for a moment. So that's number 23. Number 24 is master the classic favorite moule merniers or mussels and fries because you got to add the fries. And this is, I, I remember, I don't know if I've shared this yet. My taxi ride to the airport on my way out of Paris this summer was with a wonderful man who drove the car. Um, and he gave me his recipe for this particular classic favorite of France, especially Paris, moule moule mules, and I'm going to say that wrong, and frites, mussels and fries. And it was very simple. It it involves aromatics. It involves butter, a little bit of wine and mussels. And it was something that I cannot wait to make here in the States. We haven't had a lot of mussels lately because of different supply situations, but he made my mouth water and I was already full from having breakfast. So this is definitely a recipe to explore. Number 25 is to have classic, natural, simple manicured nails. Hmm. I like this. It saves me time and it definitely is more practical, but also beautiful. Number 26, add some red to your life. I mean, maybe it's a red lip, maybe it's a red blouse, maybe it's a red pencil skirt, something red. And this will depend on your skin tone, but also depends on how you're feeling. And um, I remember the reporter, um, and I cannot remember her name for the life of me, but she is a reporter for um, NBC News, and she has been a seasoned reporter for quite some time. And she said that her advice to be seen by whether it's the the press secretary when they were at the press um, events was to wear red so she was easily um, seen. And if she had her hand up and wanted to ask a question, um, Andrea Mitchell, sorry, there's her name, Andrea Mitchell, she would be seen because she was wearing red. And I thought to myself, I was like, that's something to think about, actually, because satorally, you don't want to blend in if you want people to see, you know, that you want to um, ask a question or whatnot. And so it's something to consider for the purposes that you are trying to um, be successful at, whether it's in your career, um, whether it's how you're feeling and you want to express that confidence. I think it definitely states something. And it doesn't have to be addressed. It can, like we just said, be red lip and maybe you play down your eyes, bring a red lip to the day and definitely simple, but powerful. All right. That's number 26. Number 27 is to make time to watch the sunset wherever you live. Take that moment 
to recognize when it's dropping, especially if you can see it very well from wherever you are, and slow down. Stop. Maybe every once in a while take a picture, but otherwise just capture it in your memory. Number 28, last but not least, have a simple, classic vinaigrette recipe memorized. I've shared mine before um, here on the blog or on the podcast and the blog, as well as in my vodcast, The Simply Luxurious Kitchen. But four to one, four parts olive oil for me, and then I have balsamic vinegar for the, the, um, the one part. I add a little bit of Dijon mustard, a little bit of freshly ground pepper, and that is all. But everyone can have their own signature. There's many different vinegars out there. You don't have to have vinegar. You can infuse it with lemon juice. There's so many different ways to do it. But something simple to always have on hand. All right. That is the list for today. And the book, again, is called Sophie the Parisian, Style Tips from a True Parisian Woman. But there are so many more than what I covered. And as you can see, it wasn't all about clothing. It was about lifestyle. It was living, going about our days. Um, but it's also a bit of a guidebook if you're interested, interested, and the show notes will have a link to that book. All right, I'm going to be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir, which is a recipe that is simple and delicious. See you in just a moment. So I've talked about this particular um, cookbook writer uh, another time on the blog and on this podcast, Nigel Slater. He's from Britain and he has many cookbooks and I'm making my way for, through, I think this is my second one that I have from him and I've already got so many more on my wish list. But this one is called um, Notes from the Larder and it is a seasonal cookbook. So he takes us from January to December, a bit of a diary of sorts and the recipes that he enjoyed throughout the year. And one of them was in the month of November. I guess that makes sense that I'm talking about in November, but that's purely by accident, I swear. Um, and the book and the and the recipe is simply orzo with zucchini, and he puts the cheese grana padano. Now I put parmesan um, parmigiano reggiano in it, but um, that's what I had available. But whatever cheese that's similar to parmesan that you like, put that in um, at the very end of this recipe. But it's a simple recipe that takes maybe 20 minutes at the most to make. And I actually just made it for my family who was here this weekend to help me ship out all of the pre-order books for my new book that's being released next week. And um, it was a big hit. Helped me out because it was simple, but I knew it was delicious and I love it. And they really enjoyed it as well. We paired it with a glass of wine and um, then followed it up with some simple chocolate chaud, um dessert. But how do you make it? Well, you simply start with your orzo and you you uh, put that in boiling water for nine minutes on the nose, he says. And he's right. If you get classic orzo, then all you need to do is boil it for nine minutes. You want to drain that. You can do that while you're cooking, but you can also do it ahead and then cook right after it. But while the orzo is cooking, what I like to do is render the pancetta. Yes, you get to put some pancetta. Um, put some pancetta and um, a small sweet onion chopped up, diced up in a pan and for 15 minutes just let and low to medium heat let that render out let the onion become translucent then you want to add a cup of your favorite white wine let it reduce to about half and then add I usually put two zucchinis that are diced up into the 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 skillet that has the the bacon or the pancetta and the onion and the wine and let it cook at a I would say a little bit of a higher heat medium to high heat because you do want to reduce the wine so when you pour the wine in you were you increase the heat to medium high reduce it to about half and then add the zucchini for about 10 minutes until the zucchini becomes soft and once that 10 minutes is up you can put your cup of Parmigiano Reggiano into the orzo, then add the mixture in the skillet, toss it, and voila, that's it. It is so good. Oh my gosh, it reminds me a little bit of, I was sharing this with my parents, I said, it reminds me a little bit of spaghetti cabanero, but the only thing in common is that you have the pancetta and the pasta and the Parmesan. Everything else is different, but it's a pretty dish too because you have the zucchini in there. 
So something to think about if you're hungry this week and you want a simple dish that has vegetables, a little bit of wonderful flavor from the pancetta and that lovely salty cheese. Mm, yum. All right. I will put that recipe on the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 232. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petite Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Before I leave today, I wanted to remind you that next Monday, Inslee Ferris is going to be my guest on this podcast. She is the illustrator behind all of the illustrations for this podcast, for the blog, for the book, everything that you see on the Simply Luxurious Life destination. Those are done by Inslee Ferris. And we've been working together since I believe it was 2011. And we do talk about that a little bit in our conversation. But be sure to tune in. Episode 233, Inslee Ferris will join me. And last but not least, I want to share a comment from a reader and listener on Twitter. And she wrote, this is from Abby Hartman. She wrote, your podcast is always there, providing me the recharge and refocus I need. You are a light to your listeners. Thanks for the gifts you give each week. And I want to say thank you, Abby, for your extremely kind words and for your time to tune in. It is a pleasure to have the opportunity to be in your earbuds, to to be in your office, to be in your car ride, wherever you're listening to this. And I just thank you all for your time. If you too are enjoying this podcast, feel free to leave a review. You can just do a star review or you can write a review and perhaps your review will be shared on an upcoming episode. All right. I hope you have a wonderful first week in November. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bonjourne. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pre-order Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, which will be released on November 13th, 2018. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is now available in paperback, as well as ebook and audio version on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, or wherever ebook and audiobooks are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjourne.